So this is Katie and I's trip thus far on our journey, where we've come and where we're going. So we started this journey, and it was July 12th when we flew into Ireland and we started in the city of Dublin and it was about a 12 hour flight. It was a long day, of course, you know, flying always takes it out of you. And then we were in Dublin for a couple days and we made our way over to our Galway area. But before that, we went to our first wolfing host, which was just outside Galway, about 20 minutes. And then after we did that work, we went to Galway and we were there for, I don't know, it was about four or five nights. And it was really beautiful, really fun, small town. Not small, but there's just small alleyways and it's just that old town feel. And it really, really was a fun city to walk around and experience. And it was definitely had a lot of Irish heritage to it. And when we were there, we got to take a trip down to the Cliffs of Moher, which we saw them, even though it was a pretty wet and rainy day. We got soaked, but we had a blast. It was super fun. Definitely suggest it to anyone. And the tour guide said that we were lucky to see it because some people don't see it. You know, they get so cloudy and rainy that you can't even see through it. So we had a classic Irish day looking at the cliffs. And then from Galway, we made our way down to Cork, which we really love that city. Tons of shopping. Seemed like there was a younger vibe to it. People were dressed up, drinking on the sidewalks, just kind of enjoying life. When we first showed up, it was, I don't know, 75 degrees. Really nice day, really warm. And then West Cork, we went to for our first work away host. So that was really fun. And we had a good time there. And we did some work for her and went to a market and went swimming and drank some water at some of the old, um, uh, the holy wells that they have, which was really cool. And then from there, we went back to Cork to then fly out to go to Scotland. And we flew into Edinburgh and we only got to stay there one night, which was sad. But we plan on going back there very shortly. And so we flew over there. And that was only... We flew like, in about an hour to London, you know, Heathrow, Heathrow. And then an hour to Edinburgh. So really not too bad at all. And it was... On, on first impressions, it was just incredible. It was... I don't know. The buildings were just beautiful. And there's so much to see. And... Uh, at the time the fair was going on and there's just so many people out and the, it was really cool because as we drove through the town and the tram system the castle torches were lit so it had the, a very archaic ancient feeling with the c castle torches being lit and it was dark out and we could see it and it just it felt like you kind of transferred back in time a couple hundred years and experienced some time travel when you're there and then from Edinburgh, we went to Glasgow, which that was fun. We were there another just one night because we had to get down to our next host. So we just kind of one night in Edinburgh, one night in Glasgow. And that was a cool city. There was definitely some things to see. But I say Edinburgh definitely had the greater first impression. And then we went down from Glasgow. We went to our, it was our second wolfing host. And so they were fun. We dug a pond for them. It was great. It was a tiny little town named Creton. It was just outside of Newton Stewart. And we were there a week. And then from there, we went to Dumfries. And that was when the, uh, the soccer, the women's final was happening. The FIFA final for the women's happening in Dumfries when we were there so we went to a pub and watched it and here's a really bad drawing of a soccer ball I'm not the greatest artist but you know you got to try and then so we had fun in Dumfries that was cool you know fun little city and stuff uh, they had some uh, ale I was told from the previous host that you know uh, places to go for like fun old pubs and places that serve real 
Scottish Ale, which there's a whole organization that basically decides kind of what is real Scottish Ale, I guess. It's, it's a whole really cool club. He told me all about it. It's very interesting. And then from Dumfries, we made our way up because we had to get towards where we're at in Gardenston with um, house sitting and dog sitting. So we were making our way up north to go there. And so we went to Aberdeen, which we loved. It was very interesting, very old history, all the all the shipping and the fishing and everything there. The Maritime Museum was really cool to go to. And just some of the buildings and Provo Skeen's house was really old and interesting to see. And then from there we went to Peterhead. Peterhead had some cool history and we went to the prison which is kind of creepy and awesome. And then we made it to Gardenston. Our host picked us up. And we've been there for five weeks. And we're heading out from there. It's also called Gamry because it's Gamry Bay. And so we've seen a bunch. We've driven around Gardenston a bunch. And we've gone to... Um, there's a castle to the west of it called Finlitter. Or fin Findlater as it's spelled. Fine later, and so that was really neat. It was basically a castle kind of lookout building that was built on a cliff edge, and it was crumbling. But there's still plenty of ruins to explore. And also, we went to Fraserboro and saw the Lighthouse Museum, which was awesome. I love lighthouses, and so that was definitely eye-opening, very interesting. And we also, when we were in Peterhead, we saw Slane's Castle. Forgot to mention that. But that was really cool. Slane's Castle was supposedly one of the inspirations for Dracula. But it seems like there's a lot of places up in the northeast corner of Scotland that claim to be a inspiration for the Dracula novel. But, I mean, it seems like he toured around there a lot. So it could, the whole area seems like an inspiration for the Dracula novel. So I'm not knocking on anyone. It definitely seems just like the whole place with all the cliffs. And I mean, during a stormy night, I could totally see it. And so from Garnston, we got to start making our way south because we have a cruise that we've booked. So that goes out of, you know, Southampton. So we got to get ready for it. So we're planning on just heading south and picking some spots along the way to explore and see. But this trip has been awesome. We, like I said, we flew in July 12th to Dublin. And so we've been on this travels for, what, three months now? And then, yeah, it's just been a blast. So from Gardenston, we got to start heading south. So we're planning on hitting Edinburgh because we loved it so much and didn't get enough time to spend there. So we'll go there for a couple nights. And then from Edinburgh, we're going to head down and possibly go to Manchester for just a night or two. Because really, the reason we're going near it is um, about an hour south, there's a theme park with a bunch of roller coasters called Alton Towers that we heard about. Katie and I love roller coasters. We went to Magic Mountain, Six Flags Magic Mountain in California for a trip just uh, last summer. So we're going to go get our fix of roller coasters and adrenaline. And then from there, we don't know exactly. We're kind of leaning towards going to London, but there's also a bath, which is beautiful. But we'll probably hit up both. I think we'll go to London first and then maybe go to Bath. But all roads lead to Southampton because that's where our cruise goes from that's where the port it leaves and so we'll be there at near the end of october and we'll get on our first cruise ever it's a graduation gift to katie because she graduated with her degree in uh, cultural and linguistic anthropology which i'm very proud of her for that and so we'll be on that cruise ship and then we'll be headed towards France, Italy, and uh, we'll be touching into Spain in some of the ports. So that'll be super fun. And we end in Italy. Uh, it ends in Naples, but we do go to Rome for a day. 
so we're gonna see Rome but then we're planning on getting off the boat and going back up to Rome because everyone says it takes I mean we met a person who lived in Rome and he said it he hasn't even seen it all it would take multiple lifetimes but we are limited on how long we take stay in all of the European Union so we have the 90-day Schengen visa as a US citizen you have 90 days that you can spend in this whole list of countries and so we're planning on staying about one month in Italy and traveling around. And we still haven't had this trip totally planned out when it comes to these next couple months. So about a month in Italy. And then we want to head over and spend a couple months in Greece. And really, we're kind of following the sunshine. We're going to head just a little bit more south that way. And I really enjoy the island of Crete and all the history that comes from that place so i think it'll be really interesting and plus plenty other islands we'll, we're planning on hitting a d bunch of different islands on the way down because there's a lot of ferries that connect them all so we're looking at that part of the trip the last couple days and seeing that you can just ferry from one to another so that'll be super fun but that's pretty much our trip so far and where we're going thanks for watching